Good evening, it's Father Etheridge. It's a pleasure to welcome you to our back to school evening, which this year will be a virtual back to school evening. So a recorded event with some activities and things and information from our teachers. So it's a pleasure to welcome you here this evening for the back to school for Aurora Center Catholic High School. We begin as we begin all things with prayer. So may we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We have a proclamation from the Gospel according to John. On the evening of the first day of the week, even though the disciples had locked the doors of the place where they were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst. Peace be with you, he said. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And the disciples rejoiced. Peace be with you, he said again. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them, and he said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive sins, they're forgiven. And if you hold them bound, they are held bound. The Gospel of the Lord. And let us, let us pray. Almighty God, as we gather before you this evening, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the Aurora Center Catholic School community to bless our students, to bless their families, to bless our faculty, our alums, and all of our benefactors and friends. We pray, Lord, that this new year may be a year of grace and of blessing. May we be aware of your great love for each of us. May we be aware that you call us to share that love with all whom we meet. May we be instruments of forgiveness in those who are willing to bring hope and joy and compassion to a world that is so needing of those gifts. We pray, Lord, that as we begin this year, that it may be a year in which we become more and more aware of your loving presence and that of your journey with each of us here at ACC, here at our homes and in our community. For you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is a, a pleasure to welcome you to this virtual back to school evening. And it's an evening that typically begins in our gymnasium with parents gathering at the beginning of the evening, and the evening ends after some informational pieces from myself and from some others uh, about the opportunity of visiting with the classroom teachers and hearing about course expectations. This year it's a little different as we're unable to gather because of rules regarding our pandemic and that the size of groups inside are limited to, to groups of no more than 50. So our back to school event is, uh, is a virtual event, and I'm pleased that you're joining with us. But it provides an opportunity to talk a little bit about the beginning of the school year, and to talk about the school year in general, and then to invite you to check on your son and daughter's uh, classes by way of information that is going to be sent forth from our teachers about their class expectation and other things. But I think as we begin this school year, I'm struck by the example of a student who, who stopped me just before the start of our school year at orientation day. And at orientation day, the, the, the student came up to me and said, oh, Father, do you know that it's been more than 200 days that we've been back here at school? And then the student looking around said, it is so good to be back. It is so good to be back. And it was a comment that was repeated throughout that orientation day. And then the next day, as we began our first half day of school, it is good to be back in school as we begin this new school year. And it's a blessing to be back. And I think a blessing for our students, for their families for our teachers as we really have the opportunity of teaching as we ought to be teaching in person and with our students. 
So it's a pleasure to welcome you back for the beginning of the school year. I, I note that some schools uh, who are unable to meet in person have elected to change their academic schedule to a modified block schedule. At Aurora Center Catholic, we've had a block schedule for more than 20 years in which we meet four classes in the fall and four classes in the spring for 90 minutes each. And that we're able, because of our block schedule, to ask more of our students by way of academic requirements towards graduation. It means our students, at a minimum, will have 28 credits to graduate. Most will graduate with 32 credits. But it means that our students typically graduate with much more science, much more English, uh, additional foreign languages, uh, additional courses in theology. So it provides a wonderful opportunity of not only allowing our students to develop their gifts and recognize their, their potential, but it also helps them prepare for national testing for colleges and preparing for those endeavors. It also provides us the opportunity when we begin the school year, as we've begun this year, it provides us an opportunity to begin the school year in a half day schedule. And you're aware that this year as we're easing back into things uh, with, our, with the pandemic and with the local rules with regard to a safe and healthy opening of our school, that we've opened the school with half day schedules until uh, Labor Day. And for us, with the block schedule, it means that a half day is a useful day. It means that our classes meet for an hour each. It gives our teachers plenty of time to go over the material for each class, to see that the students have understood the material for the class, and then to prepare for the, the next day's lesson. And it's a wonderful opportunity for us of actually moving forward and easing back into our school year. Our schedule will change after Labor Day. So we will have a, a half day schedule until Labor Day, but afterwards our schedule will change on la after Labor Day as we begin a full day schedule, beginning classes beginning at eight and concluding at 2.50 as they do typically. But on that Tuesday after Labor Day, September 8th, it's also the beginning of breakfast being available for students who wish to eat breakfast before school. It's also the beginning of our lunch service with our partner Quest Food Service, who will begin to be offering food uh, service for students, not only before school with breakfast, but also during the lunch periods uh, as, as we normally have. However, some of the, the requirements for our full day schedule require that our normal gathering of students in our cafeteria of gatherings of 200 are no longer possible at this point. So that our groups are limited to groups of 50, which means that we will have lunch period during the time that we normally have lunch periods, but that groups will be limited in the different locations that will be identified for lunch periods. So for instance, we'll have a group in our cafeteria eating lunch of no more than 50, group outside in our commons area right outside the cafeteria of no more than 50, in the hallway, a different hallway, uh, be eating lunch there. Here in the gymnasium uh, up above, there will be a group will be eating lunch, and then in the classroom and in our library, there will be small groups eating. All this means is that we can easily accommodate our students during the normal lunch periods by simply looking at different locations and having them eat in different locations. But it means that for the students, the normal food service will be similar, although a little different, in that we will have what Quest Food calls grab-and-go meals. So the students will be able to have a la carte items, a hamburger or the world-famous ACC cookies, or uh, a fuller item that they will identify for the people who will then put the things together in, in a container so that the students can then take them to the location where they will be eating so that they will grab it and that they may go to those locations. 
which helps us move students through the line. It also helps us to social distance and being mindful of the need to respect one another and the distance appropriate for that. This school year, as we begin, we begin with a plan. And the plan is the return to learn plan that was posted on our website and is available on our website that really identifies how it is that we are going to about ensuring the health and the safety for our students, for our faculty, and for those visitors who may come into our building. And the plan begins really with a pledge, and it begins with a pledge that you parents have agreed to, and your son or daughter has agreed to, and that is to our return to learn plan, the ACC return to learn plan, really guides the healthy and safe readmission of our students and our faculty back into our school community. That plan begins with a pledge, and it's a pledge that you parents and your sons and daughters have agreed to, and that is to be willing to talk about how your son or daughter is feeling every day before they come to school, and that if a student is not feeling well, that they stay home. It also means that we at school are monitoring students, faculty, helpers, visitors for temperatures and how they are feeling in the building. And we want to make sure that people are well when they're here in the building. And if not, that, that they are uh, being able to go home quickly and then see their doctor as, as deems necessary. But the important piece is please talk to your son and daughter about how they're feeling. Our return to learn plan is it is posted throughout with a simple signage that invites our families and our students who are in our building to be mindful of one another, but also to do everything they can to help slow the spread of COVID and to mitigate that spread here in our building or in, their, in your homes. First, by, by wearing a mask. And that wearing a mask is a, is a sign of respect for, for one another. To social distance and to be mindful of one another, to wash hands frequently, to cover coughs, and then, as I mentioned, to stay home if one is sick. And then to be, to be mindful that uh, by doing these things, we're, we're doing everything that we can to help everyone in our school building and in our local community to mitigate the, the spread. Apart from our plan, we also focus on the cleaning of our building and the disinfecting of our building throughout the day and then deep cleaning every evening really to help with ensure the, the, the sanitation of the building as a whole and, that, and to, to slow the spread. The, in, in every classroom, uh, students and faculty are asked to clean and disinfect contact surfaces in classrooms uh, after every class period. There is additional cleaning that takes place throughout our day in contact areas, things like doors, door knobs, doors handles, uh, bathroom contact areas, uh, really to help slow the spread. In the evening, as I mentioned, there's a deep cleaning that takes place in the disinfecting of the building to help ensure the safety and the health of everyone. But all of this follows the guideline of the American Association of Pediatrics, who, who recommend that students ought to be in classes and in school in learning. And we see that really in, in terms of the reaction of the students acknowledging how good it is to be back. In fact, how good it is to be back that, that education is, uh, is a, a an activity that involves other students and faculty members and yeah, that, that important interaction. In the event that your son or daughter might be ill, we ask you, as we've always asked, that you call school, that you let us know that they are ill. This year we will be asking uh, any symptoms and we, we will be encouraging that uh, 
that a visit to the doctor, if some of the, the COVID symptoms are present, that that takes place immediately uh, as a way of ensuring the, the health of your own children. But please call in not just once, call in every day if your son or daughter is not feeling well. And, and let our attendance secretary know that uh, the situation of your, your child's health, but also that we are checking attendance and children are expected to be in classes, uh, whether here or doing e-learning. If you're interested in additional information about school, I, I would direct your attention to our school website. And our school website is important information related to uh, calendar items, related to food menu, related to athletics, related to uh, important events taking place in our school, in our athletic conference, in many of our activities and clubs. So please check our school website and our school app for information about school and about calendar. Also, you'll note, I hope, that you've received a message from me from our automated phone service that is an important way for us to keep people informed about important events like our back to school evening uh, this evening and and other events like our first all school mass will take place on september 11th the friday after we come back and it will take place as a live stream event early in the morning at eight o'clock at the start of our school day and our students who are unable to gather in our gymnasium as we normally do for school mass will be in their homerooms for the school mass that will be streamed through the building. But it becomes an uh, important time for families to join us and to pray with us in this live stream mass for our students, for our faculty, for our alums, and for all who are supportive of our school community. But that information would be, may be found on our school website. The other piece of information that is to be found on our school website is important links to your child's academic progress. In the top right corner of our website, there are a couple of links, one that's marked parents, another that's marked students. When you click on the parents link, you're taken to a series of, of links that are very helpful and important, particularly the one that's marked plus portals. Plus Portals is our grade book. Every family was sent a link in your email to activate the Plus Portals. If your son or daughter is a returning student, you've already activated your Plus Portals. And so that link uh, has not changed and your password has not been reset. So you may activate and you can make, get in plus portals to check on your students' grades and homework, to be sharing emails back and forth with your, your son or daughter's teachers. But it's an important way of sharing information both from the teachers to the families and from the parents to the teachers as need be. So I encourage you to check for a link in your email. If you didn't receive an email, please check your spam. And if there's still difficulties, please call school and say you, you need help finding your plus portals activation and we will help with that. Uh, and with our virtual back to school evening, you will find important information from our teachers about what they expect from the students in terms of the course expectation, course syllabi, course projects, and other things as we begin this new school year. Do not hesitate to reach out to our faculty. Our faculty is excellent and they're here to help. And they're looking forward to connecting with families, particularly since this back to school does not provide us that opportunity of, of meeting with faculty and with families. But I'm encouraging you to reach out to faculty as faculty will be reaching out to you to talk about their expectations. As we begin this new school year, athletics and activities are different. The Illinois High School Sporting Association began this year by limiting the number of sports that take place in the fall. 
And that means that from the normal group of sports that take place and help us begin our school year, we have only a few sports that are beginning the school year. Cross country for boys and girls, tennis for girls, and golf for boys and girls are the three sports that begin our school year. And with that, the limitation because of Illinois rules takes place with regard to how far teams can travel, who we normally compete with, and, and those sorts of things. So, so please check on our school website, the athletic page, for information about athletics. And check on the school site for information about activities and clubs that your son or daughter might be interested in. Then as we begin this new school year, we begin with a variety of information for you. But I, I think the important piece is as we begin the year with a great deal of hope and awareness of the many blessings that we've had over the years as a school community. Uh, we gather in uh, this gymnasium where we gather for school masses, where we gather for uh, homecoming activities, where we gather for games and many, many sports. And I gather here at a cross that stood welcoming students to the original Aurora Central Catholic building, which began as Madonna High School in 1926. And students came in the Madonna building and the Roncalli building on the east side of town until this new beautiful campus was open nearly 25 years ago uh, on this spot. And so as we begin this school year, we look back to 1926, the beginning of Catholic education in the Aurora area. We look with pride on that great tradition, and we look forward to a, another great school year here at Aurora Center Catholic. Mindful of our past and proud of our future, it's mindful also of God's loving presence as we begin this year. So I thank you for joining us for this back to school virtual event. I encourage you to check with the teachers for information about your son and daughter's class material. And I look forward to the time when we can all gather in this gymnasium for sporting events and for other events and for musicals and other things on campus that will not be restricted with groups of nearly 50. So thank you for joining us. May God bless you all. May God bless ACC. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to ACC. I'm Leah Dakanai Rodriguez, Development Director for the school. Um, among the things that I do is I oversee the fundraising activities for ACC. Why do we need to fundraise? Well, we want to keep our tuition as low as possible compared to um, some of the area schools like Rosary or Marmion or Aurora Christian. Um, our tuition fee is really the lowest. Um, it's at six thousand one hundred twenty five um, or seven thousand one hundred twenty five. However, the cost to educate a child um, costs about $9,500 to $10,000. So the tuition fee here only covers about 64 to 75%. So we need to find a way to bridge the gap. And the way we do this is through fundraising. Every child receives some tuition assistance or scholarship. So we really need everyone's help. Um, like, so one of our big fundraisers, um, actually our largest fundraiser for the school is the Fund for ACC, which is our annual appeal. This kicks off in fall, around late October, early November. And then we do a second one in early May. So it's a big direct mail that we do to all our constituents. And it's also tied to Giving Tuesday. Um, Another big fundraiser that we do um, is the Super Saturday Night, which is our largest special event fundraiser. Um, we do this in spring, so for this year it will be on April 24, 2021, so please mark your calendars for that. It's a dinner auction gala event that takes many hands to put on, um, and we put together a committee. Um, that helps us with the planning and the execution of this event. 
we look for sponsors it's really important to find good sponsors to to help us with our or to underwrite our cost and then we also put together a lot of donations it can be in kind they can be gift certificates to restaurants to venues party rentals travel sports memorabilia items that you can think of that we can put together for our auction packages so any contacts that you might have or that can donate services or items in kind we truly could use them we also need to fund our capital needs and saw in 2013 the school launched a capital campaign and they call this we call this the heritage of faith with which is about investing in our children's future it involved building a stem center an athletic center and a performing arts center we are wrapping up this campaign and since the campaign started in 2013 we've had several changes one of which was a major big pledge that was made and that we are we're counting on unfortunately didn't come through so we were unable to make ground for the stem center now we will still build we were able to raise at least 2.5 million dollars so when we build because of all these changes it will be in a different scale we are our next steps is will be to regroup and reassess our needs um, so that we can reconfigure our building plans um, getting involved is really a great way to become part of the ACC community and a great way to meet our families so I would like to invite you um, to uh, look at our different ways of um, getting involved and becoming a parent volunteer um, I mentioned the Super Saturday night we are uh, looking for co-chairs and volunteers and of course we would love for you to attend the event um, so watch out for additional information on this and then you can also be part of the booster club uh, we are very grateful to all that they do so I know they'll be meeting in um, later and sometime in October so you can um, let me give me a call or look uh, call Luke and we can point you to the direction uh, on how to get in touch with our booster club the last and the easiest way to help the school is through smile.amazon.com what is that that's a lot of us already shop at amazon.com um, if you go to smile.amazon.com and you assign ACC um, as the charity of your choice 0.5% of the proceeds will go to our school so all you need to do is like I said go to smile.amazon.com sign up um, and choose ACC and once you sign up for that uh, you can start shopping and proceeds will go to ACC your benefits with um, Amazon Prime still uh, you still get the same benefits and it doesn't cost you anything so hopefully we can all participate and do this ever since we started promoting this um, in social media our um, our donations um, through from Amazon really in increased a lot we had a 255 percent increase the last um, quarter so we hope that you can um, support us with this again um, welcome to ACC if you have any questions um, please feel free to stop by my office even if you just want to chat and learn more about the things that we do please stop by um, or give me a call or shoot me an email my office is just right across Mrs. Livingston's office thank you and good night